Good afternoon, more Medic One. Today, I've got a little treat for you. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, though. This is going to be a three-part video. The first part's going to be the teardown. The second part's going to be failure analysis. And then the third part's going to be rebuilding the top end on this steel four, uh, TS420. So basically, we're going to get started here. Uh, you want to take the starter off. I've got the bolts already loose. Uh, they're 13 millimeter. Go ahead and get these out of here and then your starter will pull right off of there. Once you get the starter off you'll see that the uh, the clutch uh, starter drum, the starter cup and the clutch is very accessible to get to. Uh, the next step is to remove the uh, this cover and then the belt that goes around it. Once you get the belt off you can take this whole arm assembly will just slide right off of the studs right here. Set it off to the side. Next step we want to remove the muffler. There's three screws. There's two that hold it to the engine block and one right here. Go ahead and remove the muffler. And then we can see the damage. This saw is not that old, but if you look, I don't know if you can see it in there, but we've got some mechanical damage to the piston. Uh, it looks to me like the top ring may have broken because there's a gash missing out of the... Uh, very top ring uh, land or groove but uh, we'll uh, go ahead and get this thing tore down and see how it turns out go ahead and remove the air filter when you use these TS 420s for concrete saws they don't live very long uh, if you use them to cut rebar metal stuff like that it seems to live a little longer and uh, as you can tell this engine has been dusted pretty severely. That's nothing but just pure grit. Concrete dust. It's heck, heck, heck on these engines. I'm going to drop this air filter on the ground and see if I can get anything to come out of it. Not a whole lot. Customers probably replaced this filter trying to make this thing run. But uh, go ahead and take the orange cover. There's a screw here, a screw here, one here, and one here. Go ahead and loosen those up. Go ahead and uh, loosen up the cap for the spark plug. Take it out of the way. Now you see that there's a little throttle wire that's hooked around the, the throttle lever right there. Go ahead and take your pair of needle nose and uh, pull that up out of the way. Go ahead and snake your kill lead, kill wire leads out of the way and uh, you should be able to just pull this cover right off of here and you may still have to snake a few wires here right there and this should just lay up out of the way. You could leave it like that or you can actually go as far as to remove the, uh, the wires from the switch up here. Go ahead and remove the cylinder head cover. There's a couple screws. There's one here. And there's one here. And there's one. I think that's it been a while since I've done one of these. Oh yeah, it's right here. Part of the flywheel cover screw. Go ahead and remove your flywheel cover. And get it off to the side. Now to keep from having to fight this coil wire, just go ahead and remove the ignition module. It's really easy. One here. One right there. Get in there. 
now we're getting somewhere getting down to the meat and potatoes of this job as you can tell after you strip all the plastic out from around the engine you can actually get to what you need to get off which is the jug or the cylinder uh, the next step we want to do we want to remove uh, the carburetor screw here and there's two right up in here and they're t27 go ahead and slide your choke lever off out of its post and remove the throttle or the choke linkage from the carburetor you'll notice that the carburetor is loose now and so is the intake manifold uh, that's due to the screws being out uh, you, what you want to do now you can actually take this carburetor and just slide it straight up and out once you get your carburetor off just kind of inspect it and you can tell that the it's a dual barrel carburetor this is your fresh air port here and your carburetor down below I always recommend uh, rebuilding the carburetor every time I do a top end job just to cover my rear end on the repair uh, a lot of times uh, I'll just replace the carburetor or I don't offer any warranty at all uh, you can do what you want to do but uh, if you're if you rebuild the carburetor and it and it's not working right you have a chance of burning up the, the piston and cylinder you just put on so let's go ahead and loosen the clamps here one down one here and one on the bottom once you get the clamps loose carefully, and I mean carefully, take a screwdriver and uh, pry these rubber boots off the cylinder head. Get the intake manifold and boot assembly off, and uh, we're going to take the saw and we're going to turn it upside down <coughs> and spill gas everywhere because you've got to put the cap on. Real smart. Always, always have shop rags around people. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> Give me just a minute. <laughs> I never once said I was perfect. But anyway, uh, your jug screws, you can get them down through here. If you look, this plug here has got this um, handle bracket in the way. Take the handle bracket off. <laughs> There's the repair tag dropped off by Juan. No worky. <laughs> but anyway, uh, on the bottom here, you they're going to be pretty tight. They may... Uh, what you want to do is get you a T27 with a long bit. Uh, you, I've got a quarter inch ratchet. You can actually use a 3 8 ratchet if you want to, but break all four bolts loose here. Go ahead and loosen those screws that I talked about a few seconds ago, and then go ahead and uh, turn the saw back over on its feet. Carefully inch this cylinder up like that. Say hello, piston. And oh wow, yep. Here's part of the piston ring broken in half. Let's take a look at this piston a little bit closer. There's the intake side. It's got oil, but all the oil grooves that come factory on this piston are gone. Uh, the edges here are just razor sharp. Uh, the piston skirt's razor sharp. Even the top of the piston is just sharp, sharp, sharp. What you want to do is look down in here and it's really not that bad and it's probably going to be salvageable but uh, you want to inspect the rod bearing this one seems to be okay. Uh, if you got rod bearing failure or crankshaft bearing failure, uh, you can replace those bearings, but it's just going to be more labor involved and about probably $50 to $60 more in parts. But uh, let's get it turned around here so we can see what the real damage looks like. Yeah, that piston is gone. And uh, it looks to me like. The piston ring broke and just got lodged in a port and it just in the exhaust port. And I don't know if I can get that off there or not, but you can see where it pushed the piston up. But uh, but anyway, this is part one, the teardown. Uh, part two, we'll get it uh, 
new cylinder and the piston in and uh, we'll get it all cleaned up. I'm going to rebuild the carburetor and put new fuel lines on it and new primer bulb and uh, we'll get this puppy running again. But anyway, if you have any questions about steel equipment, more Medic 1, y'all have a great day.